Fox for his Tuesday availability. We'll go ahead and get started with Jeff Ferrano. Go ahead, Jeff. Good afternoon, Justin. Um, can we get out of the way some of the uh, injury stuff? Um, Cam Good, I was Seth, uh, I believe Ben Coleman was shook up perhaps in the game. And an update on DeCarlos Brooks, if you would. Uh, DeCarlo should be back. Uh, let's see here. Dio Sefa will be day to day. Uh, same with Ben Coleman. And uh, who else did you mention there, Jeff? Sorry. Uh, Cameron Good. Cameron. Uh, we'd expect uh, likely that Cameron will play, but we won't know more until later in the week. And there's nothing new on uh, Coin Ding yet? Nothing new on Coin Ding. Uh, Brian Driscoll. Uh, we'll be out for the remainder of the season, upper body. Okay. And uh, I noticed you made a just a slight change on the depth chart with uh, Marquez Bimage moving into the top spot there. Can you just talk about how he's played for you and if if you've been surprised by the kind of impact he's been able to have? Uh, he's done a great job since he's been here. It's you know he had to learn on the run. He's played college football as we all know, transferring in from from Texas, but. Uh, Really glad he's with us. He's fit in well, obviously, on the field and getting better and better the, the more he's played and more he's got comfortable within the scheme. And then he's, uh, he's a really good teammate. The guys respect him. He's fit in very well with the locker room. And if I could switch gears real quick, um, you're facing uh, Jed Fish. I believe you coached against him when he was the interim coach at UCLA several years ago. What do you recall about him and, and – does that experience have anything to do with uh, the game on Saturday? Oh, I wouldn't say that that experience really is a factor at all. Jed's a, a good coach. He's been a lot of different places, um, college, NFL. Uh, you see what they're doing offensively. Uh, they're difficult to defend, and they got speed at receiver, and they find ways to get guys the ball in space and uh, use some deceptives as well. So he's a, he's a good football coach. I know that. Um, and they're, uh, you know, looking at what they did last week, scoring 34 at the Coliseum is a one score game, one score game at home against Washington. Uh, really, you know, up at Oregon, they're one score game in the fourth quarter. And so they're, they have uh, weapons. Uh, I know their record isn't great, but if you, all, it, all it takes is you to turn on the tape and actually watch them play what they're doing schematically and the players, uh, their efforts and the ability of them. And so we'll, we have a great deal of respect for, for those guys coaching and playing. And is it important at all to remind your players that the fact they've lost 20 games in a row will have nothing to do with Saturday? Yeah, I don't know that our players even would know that. Uh, it's not something we talk about. We talk about the players uh, that we're facing, uh, the schemes that we're seeing, and it's easy to have respect for them when you watch that. So, uh, yeah, I understand that their record's probably not what they want it, but you look at how they've played and the players they're playing with, and they've come up on the kind of the wrong side of some close games. And it's happened in the last two weeks. They play hard. They have they're a, a dangerous outfit on in every phase of the game. So we have a great deal of respect for them. Thanks. Yeah, okay, we're going to trace Travers from Rivals. Yeah, Coach. I wanted to ask about uh, Will Craig as well. He was someone who got banged up against yeah. Oregon State. Do you expect him back this week? Yeah, Will's day to day as well. Um, hopefully know a little bit more late in the week. And I think in the aftermath of the game, we talked about Isaiah Young and just the consequential plays that he made. In going back and watching the tape, what did he do well to kind of make those plays? Yeah, to come into the game, really his first extensive action, uh, to come in and he had four wins uh, in the pass game. I mean, he had a win and zero man to man down in the red zone, in the end zone. Uh, he had a third down pass breakup on our sidelines on a fade route. He had a cover three where he overlapped a seam route as a corner and tipped the ball. And we almost got a pick out of from Daniel Scott on that one. And then contesting uh, in breaking route to break up a ball and Nate Ruchina picks it. So there's four really good plays. Um, and I, I just, I thought it was a guy making the most of an opportunity and having the uh, confidence in his abilities and knowing what to do and playing good football. So really, really proud of Isaiah. And it's a lesson for everybody that you don't know when your time's coming, but when it does, you want to be prepared. And I think he is uh, really was the epitome of that on, on Saturday. 
And on another note, uh, I know you don't, you say to not take too much store by the depth chart, but I saw a Keely Calhoun listed as an outside linebacker. Is that kind of something that you guys have been working on with the kind of, I want to say bear formation that you guys ran during fall camp with the four down linemen type deal, or is he just yeah. being groomed in a certain way? Yeah. Akili can play. It depends on the grouping that we're in. Yeah. So if we're in base, he'll play defensive end. If we're in our nickel grouping, he, he, he could play inside or we could put him on the edge. That's the reason we listed him like that. So um, he's still a defensive lineman, but there's a couple of things we'll, we could do in, in nickel with him as an edge player, kind of because of his skill set and size, those type of things. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. Hey, we'll go to David Bush with Baron Center. Yeah, uh, Coach, looking at Arizona's defense, uh, what sort of things do they do, and are they better than they've shown, do you think? Yeah, I mean, they're – uh, they're a good defense. I mean, even statistically, you look at them, they're uh, pass defense. They're very aggressive, play man-to-man. -man. Coach Brown's a very good football coach. Uh, they are aggressive. Uh, they will pressure you. And so, uh, yeah, we got a lot of respect for their defense. Thanks. Okay, we'll go back to Trace Travers. Yeah, I realized I forgot to ask about Colin Gamble, who was also shaking up his he day to day as well. Yep. Yep. Cool. Thank you. Hey, okay, guys, any other questions? Looks like Steve Croner has one. Go ahead, Steve, from the San Francisco Chronicle. Yeah, Justin, obviously your offense played really well, balanced, efficient uh, this past Saturday. How much better can it play? Yeah, that's one of the things we talked about in our meeting on Monday. Our offense had a, did a great job. Uh, ran the ball, threw the ball, uh, were efficient. We scored touchdowns in the red zone. The third down conversions, because we were, were efficient with the ball, uh, were very high. And then, uh, you know, one other uh, kind of key stat would be the, the lack, there was no penalties. We didn't, we weren't behind the sticks uh, on offense. So, can we be better? Absolutely. And there's a number of plays that our guys watch. We watch all of them. Uh, and there's a number of instances where we can be better uh, offensively, whether it's run game, pass game, each position group, even the guys that played very well and earned game balls had uh, plays that they could have certainly played better. And that's what we're focused on is, you know, continuing to raise the bar and uh, continuing to improve late in the season. And we, we got to take pride in that. Thank you. It looks like uh, Jeff Ferrato is next. Go ahead, Jeff. Justin, we just talked with Nate Ricchina. Um, He's obviously made some big plays for you guys. He, are, are you surprised a guy who really didn't have a high school senior year, who has changed positions, and now he's a first-year guy for you? He's got two interceptions, and he seems to be in the right place at the right time. Yeah. I don't know if surprise is the right word. You never quite know, I mean, especially when you're changing positions. We really liked Nate in high school. He was a, a – just a good football player. You know, I remember we talked about that uh, a lot, you know, we we didn't think he was going to probably be a receiver, which he was a very productive receiver inside receiver there at Monta Vista played some safety nickel type stuff for him. Um, you know, we got a good relationship with his coach at the time, Matt Russie and Matt loved him, his work ethic, uh, the toughness. And so when we recruited him, we, we kind of had to find a home. So we watched him a lot and Peter, uh, watched him a ton and uh, we kind of came to the conclusion we thought he'd play inside linebacker and so he you know his first fall he was out and put on some weight came in at 220 and he's he's uh, the same he's a good football player and he you know he's very a smart guy he knows where to be um, you know he's still learning a lot because it's his first time really playing inside linebacker in his life and he's just a you know handful of games in but he's uh, around the ball and uh, he's got two interceptions already He's for the most part in the right spots. And so uh, really, really, you know, excited about him and his, his future. And he's just, uh, as a, again, a freshman that's come in and changed positions to be that productive early in his career says a lot about him. Thank you. Hey, we'll go to Jim McGill with Barron Center. Hey coach, after some frustrating losses earlier in the season, uh, how has the 
the team responded to a couple of games where they've really played more up to their potential? Has it positively impacted the team? Yeah, well, of course, you know, the the amount of, uh, you know, winning and the joy that comes with winning is, uh, uh, you know, hard to maybe – quantify because you just it's there's nothing quite like that that's why we all do this because we're competitive people the players are very competitive they want to win and uh i think they to their credit they never stop working on improving you know because when you have a tough stretch like we had and you weren't you aren't losing you can't get preoccupied with the actual losing you got to get focused on what do we need to do to win and so they did a great job of that and i don't see that changing i you know focusing on improvement uh continuing to work at practice and meetings. And so it really speaks to the mentality of the individual players and the team as a whole. Thanks. Here we'll go back to Trace Travers. Go ahead, Trace. Yeah, coach, I think I'd be remiss if I didn't ask about Nick Alston because I believe he was a game captain for you guys over uh, on Saturday. And, you know, he had, he's had two blocked punts this year. Uh, what kind of work has he put in on special teams? Is he a core four guy? Nick has done everything for us uh, in his career here and uh, really, really proud of him. He, you know, the game and the team uh, it's very important to him and you see it in his preparation, how hard he practices uh, really uh, an important guy for our team in a number of ways. And, had another big play with the block punt. Critical, critical. I mean, you could argue that's probably the biggest play of the game because of the momentum that that created for us. And, uh, you know, he, Nick's a guy that will do anything and everything to help the team win. And he's proven that over his career here, whether it's special teams, uh, offense. You know, he does certain things that, on offense. And as some of you may remember, a couple of years ago, we – got guys injured and banged up and he came over with about a week's practice and played the entire game against Ole Miss at outside linebacker. Uh, so really just uh, credit to Nick. And uh, I think it speaks to how much he cares about the team and what he's doing. So we're, we're proud of him and glad he's here. And I know you guys talk a lot about uh, kids when they're coming out of high school, having multiple sport experience. And Nick is a guy that has that with, playing volleyball, which you don't get that often. How much does that help him in the pump block game? Uh, that's a good question, Trace. Uh, I'm sure it doesn't hurt. You know, Nick was a, a, a big time volleyball player coming out of high school. And remember when we first started recruiting him, uh, his junior year, he, he would come to, I think we saw him as a junior, he'd come over and you know, he was kind of tall and had a big frame and lanky. And then all of a sudden his senior year, you know, he, man, he put on like 25 pounds. And so you could just kind of see the way his, you know, physique was growing that he's going to be something. And, I, you know, we try to get really as many of those big skilled athletes as we can, and they're going to end up somewhere, whether it's outside linebacker or tight end or D end, or, you know, sometimes those guys even end up at offensive tackle, but having that multi-sport background, that big frame, and he's a competitive guy. I keep going back to it. It matters. He really cares about it and uh, it's important to him. And, so uh, that's why he's having success. Thank you. Yeah. Hey guys, anybody else with the final question for coach? Okay, looks like we're good. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Justin.